Hello! Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another Lord of the Rings draft here on the channel. I'm going to be going pick by pick, play by play, talking through everything, so you will know what to do when you draft this format yourself. Let's dive in. If you do enjoy this sort of video, let me know, and I'll make more of them. But yeah. Also, let me know your favorite parts of this format, your least favorite parts, things you need help with. I read all your comments, and I love being able to help when I can. Okay, we have opened the Balrog, Durin's Bane, which is a fantastic rare, in my opinion. Sure, seven mana is a lot, but as the top end for an aggro-ish or mid-range-ish deck, this card just does a lot of work. It's really hard to block, especially like profitably, like do double blocks to trade, because there's just not that many legendaries to block it. Even if they have one or two, it's hard to do. And even if they kill it, it takes something down with it. So that's just a really good card. Also very splashable in green decks. I have splashed it a couple times. Other cards in this pack, Frodo Baggins. Actually quite nice because there are a decent number of legendary creatures, so it's a nice ring tempt engine. Uh, I haven't gotten to play with Gwei here yet. Grimma has not been super impressive to me. In the commons, I do like Protector of Gondor. And I think, yeah, that's the only one that I've really played a lot of. The other ones are a little bit more marginal. This card's wrecked me a couple times, but I think Bal Balrog is really good. And somebody passed us Sauron. What did they take over? They took a common. What common would you take over Sauron? That is weird. This card's quite good. You just get to bring back your creatures, and if you make it the ring bearer, it is even better. Uh, one thing you can do is if you have a card that like ETBs to make you the ring bearer, you can like bring that back, and then it'll make Sauron the ring bearer. So that's cool. M Meneldor is fine in some decks. Aemir is pretty cool in some decks. Um, yeah, honestly, like there's nothing that's better than Sauron in this pack. At least I don't think there is. It's, all, it's also the same color as the Balrog. If Sauron wasn't in this pack, it'd be kind of interesting because Aemir is the same color as the Balrog, but I think Errand Rider of Gondor might be better. I would probably lean towards taking Errand Rider just because it's a cheaper play, but Aemir going with the Balrog is a nice upside. Also another big haste threat. Maybe you can build a deck around that kind of ability. We've got Sauron. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Here there's an Urken brand, which is a card that I've tried to make work before. It only really fits into red-white in, like, a perfect home, because red-white just has more humans. But it is a good combo with Rally at the Hornburg. Honestly, though, Rally at the Hornburg might just be a better pick than Urken brand, because it's a cheap play right now, and my deck kind of needs that. There is another Errand Rider of Gondor, but my deck is kind of gearing up to be black-red. I don't see a reason to abandon that just yet. I think this card's great. Urkenbrand or Rally. I'm going to take Rally at the Hornburg. Just get a cheap play, make two 1-1s. One -ones. If I do have Sacrifice shenanigans in the deck, that would be good for the Balrog. That would be good for Sauron, and this card would play into that pretty nicely. The best card is probably Errand Rider, followed by maybe Endsphere or Urkenbrand or Rally. Those three are all kind of close second, which is why I'm willing to take the power level hit to take the Rally. I don't know what's uh, happening, but I love Voracious Felbeast. This card is fantastic. I'm really happy I took the, the Rally, because Felbeast has been very nice for me. There's also a Glorious Gale, which is a great blue card. Lash of the Balrog plays well with Rally at the Hornburg. But for now, we're just going to take the Felbeast. Be happy to get another good top-end card. The thing is, it just, just gets a, a nice two-for-one big flyer and kind of stabilizes you with the food. So really nice. Also, if it does get in your graveyard somehow, it's a great card to reanimate with Sauron. So that's cool as well. If I wasn't taking that, I'd probably take Lash. Even though I think Glorious Gale might be better, I think I've just got enough good black and red cards that it's worth going down this path. Okay. What have we here? We see some blue. There's an Ithilian Kingfisher. There's also a Woe's Pathfinder, a card that I really do like. And then the only black and red cards is Oliphant and Torment of Gollum. Now, Torment of Gollum is not my favorite card. I haven't gotten to try out Oliphant, but I do like the Land Cyclers in general. And it could play well with Sauron. Mm. I think the other option is Woes, because Woes tends to fit better in like these like Jund style decks that like do some splashing. Like black, green, splash, red for Balrog could be something I do. I'm gonna take Woes over Oliphant. Hopefully I can get some land cyclers later, but I don't think I'm gonna be going for blue, black, splashing red, because I think green is just better at it. And we see now a late Ents Fury. That could be a nice pickup. There's a Willow Wind, so maybe blue is open. We see some black cards, but nothing too special. Shelob's Ambush is one that I like, but I think we're just going to keep taking these green cards now that we've kind of gone on that route a little bit. 
another Woes Pathfinder. I like that. Seerith Uncle Patrol can do good work in like the Sacrifice style deck. But seeing a late Woes Pathfinder, I think this card is just pretty nice. Ramping into Voracious Fell Beast is good. Ramping into Sauron is nice. Gift of Strands is a fine combat trick sometimes, but I think this is going to be better than Seerith Uncle Patrol right here. And now we get a generous end. Huge. Looks like we read the signals, identified green as being open, and now we're getting paid off. I would play an Inherited Envelope because it helps me ramp um, and helps me with fixing for my splash. Also, Shire Terrace does a similar thing, but I've really wanted to get more reps with Generous End. It just has always looked good to me, and I haven't gotten to do it yet. Okay, now we get an Inherited Envelope. I would like to play the Huron because it goes with Sauron, but I think Inherited Envelope is pretty nice for this kind of ramp strategy that I've got, which is one of the re other reasons I like the end, because for ramp decks like Woes and stuff, you really want that top end that can also be early game. We got the envelope, and now there is a bag end porter. There's also a wizard's rockets. This isn't a card that I've played with very much. Uh, from what I can tell, it it just seems a little hard to use. Um, yeah, I kind of might want to get some reps, but I like the repeatable source of color so I can do some more amb ambitious splashing sometimes. Also, I don't like that it kind of sits into play and is kind of like card disadvantage for a while. Revive the Shire is interesting, but I think Bow might be better. Eh, revive can get back like one of my key threats. I don't know. Bow is probably better. I can probably get a revive at some point. Case in point. Maybe I just take Willow Wind because I could technically splash blue instead. Sure. Cast into the fire. Okay, pack two, another Sauron. That's pretty cool. I think Ranger's Firebrand is really good also, but I'm looking to be black-green base because I have Sauron, Felbees, which are double black, Balrog. Black itself didn't seem that open, but that'll mean it'll probably be open this pack. I think blue-green was maybe the most open, but I don't have any really good payoffs for being in blue-green, and I have a lot of good black cards. Getting another Sauron is also nice. really makes me want to take cards like the land cyclers, because then I'll be able to get those back into play. I'll always have stuff in my graveyard. So I'll take this. Ooh, and now we get an elven chorus. Perfect. This card is fantastic. Absolutely stellar card. It's a little bit of a non but with Woe's Pathfinder, but Woe's can ramp this out, which is still nice. But Woe's already taps for mana. Which Rise of the Witch King is also a pretty good one with like things like Ent. Hopefully we'll be able to like watch dogs or something, but this card is just fantastic. Easy pick. If I wasn't going to take that, I would take maybe try out Rise of the Witch King. I haven't gotten to do it much, but sacrificing a Woe's Pathfinder and getting back something like that I milled or did something with seems pretty good, but Elven Chorus is great. We've got a nice ramp deck here. Ooh, and now a Bitter End. Nice. We're seeing a lot of red cards this pack. I think Gothmog versus Bitter Downfall is interesting in some ways, but I just think Bitter Downfall is more important. You just need removal spells. I'm glad we made this switch to green. Green has been open. But Bitter Downfall is fantastic. Let's see what awaits us in the next pack. Okay, there's an Entish Restoration. Which is... Not a card I've loved, if I'll be honest. You sack a land, you get two basic lands that come into play tapped. So you can fix your colors. But if you have a big creature, you get even more lands. I think I'd rather just take the Easterling Vanguard. Just get a nice cheap play that can trade off early. And I th think Entish might even wheel. That's been my experience with it. Okay, we're seeing a lot of white cards, which is a little bit surprising. Gimli. Haunt of the Dead Marshes. I guess I'll just take that. I'm not going to go into white here. I've got enough playables that I'm not going to have to abandon my really strong Elven cores and my Sauron plan. I'm operating under the assumption that Sauron's good. I have played it in one deck, but I didn't get to do a ton with it. But I think the card looks really good. I like a Mushroom Watchdogs. Lets you use your foods for some counters. There's a Snarling Warg. Lookout. I think Lookout's really much better if you can use the Scry. We're seeing a lot of white cards, but getting Watchdogs is fine. Brandywine Farmer can gain me a lot of life. It can trade off and then be used for, like, Sauron. It's also a Bag End Porter. Elven Farsight. 
I have a lot of creatures and I have some really good ones to find, so maybe Farsight's better than a Bag End Porter. I'm just going to try taking Bag End Porter and see how that works out. Just get a nice 4 4. Why not? Lambdas. Lempus. There's a Seerith Ungol Patrol. Brandywine Farmer. A. Eh? I'll try taking Farmer. It gains me a lot of life for this kind of mid rangey strategy. Okay, we'll take Bombadil Song now. Not really a card I'm super psyched about. Seerith Ungol Patrol, sure. <sighs> this deck is looking pretty good. Light red splash, partially enabled by inherited envelope. I think this gives me the most possibilities. I don't really think I want the bow. Sure, we'll take the bow now. We're not going to main deck the other card. So I don't have a ton of black cards, but my ones that I do have are pretty good. So my plan is to just leverage those. And Duril is absolutely absurd, so this is a nice pickup for any deck. What else is in this pack? There's a Claim the Precious, which I wouldn't mind. I would love a Many Partings. Entish Restoration. I don't know how many people are playing green. Maybe one of these two will wheel. I feel like Butterbur is like better in like a splash roll in a control deck than in like green white aggro, which is pretty funny. Claim the Precious would be my pick if I wasn't taking the Enduril, but Enduril has to be taken out of any pack pretty much. Ooh, now a Delighted Halfling. So you can ramp you for one mana, and it can cast legendaries. So it can be used for the Balrog, the Sauron. Hmm. Oh, I don't know if Halfling is better than many partings in Limited. It probably is, because if you have it in your opening hand, you just get such an advantage. But many partings would be nice in this deck. I'm just going to take the Halfling, get some attempts with it. I'm hoping I wheel this inherited envelope, honestly. And Fury is nice, though. It goes well with the bag end borders. Oh, I love Celeborn. Celeborn's fantastic, even just on its own. You don't need anything to make Celeborn good. I wouldn't mind a Merkwood Spider. But I'm happy to play Celeborns. Ooh, Shire Terrace or Many Partings. Terrace is also a way to get my red mana for the Balrog. I have a feeling I might wheel some partings. If I play one mountain, the Shire Terrace, and the Inherited Envelope, I should be good. I'm just going to take the Shire Terrace. I feel like I'm going to have enough spots in my deck. Farsight. Hmm, counter on creature. I haven't gotten to try this card yet. I might just take the Elven Farsight, though. I have a lot of creatures, potentially. Noble Elves, sure. Ooh, actually, Oliphant. No, I don't like Oliphant when you only have, um... When you only have one of the land you're trying to fix with, Oliphant loses a lot of value. One, two, three, four. I can play Grimma. Just a three mana one, four, though. Eh, I'm not going to play any of these cards. Maybe I should have taken Grimma. Okay. The Ladrim Guide. There's a Gimli, which I don't want. This is an interesting draft. Butterbur. Morgul Knife Wound is horrific. Don't play that card. We have three removal spells. One, two, three. I'm just going to take this guy. I already have a bow that I'm not playing. Ooh, Lash the Balrog came back. That's nice. And many partings did not come back. But that's okay, I guess. It does make me a little sad, but I think my Shire Terrace is going to be fine. 
Inherited envelope also didn't wheel. Ooh, many partings did come back. Wow. Wow. I mean, not all of them came back, but even just getting one is a huge benefit. That's awesome. I can play one mountain in this deck and have one, two, three, four red sources. Five if you include the halfling. Six, seven if you include the woes guys. I'll be casting this ball rock super easily. I could probably start to get more ambitious with my splashes if I wanted to. Like, I could splash like cards in multiple colors. Oh, Seerth Uncle should get in there. Brandywine Farmer. I, I had a bunch of cards that were maybe in the maybe pile that I, I'm just going to put in for now and then I'll cut as I go. Okay, so those are the, all the cards I'll consider. I'm going to run one of these and an extra one of those. 15, 16, 17. I think 17 lands because I only have one land cycler and I have a lot of expensive plays, even though I do have a lot of ramp as well. And now I just need to cut 10 cards from this. Easy cut on the Galadrim bow. How many cards do I have with the ring tempts? Not many. Bombadil Song can ring tempt. Is that it? Oh my gosh. It's not like I wasn't taking them, I just didn't see them. Hmm. So those two cuts were easy. I'm going to cut Haunt of the Dead Marshes because I don't really have sacrifice synergies. So I'll cut that. I really don't like Lookout when you don't have Scry Synergy, so I'm going to cut that guy too. Or Ring Synergies, and I have neither. Um, 18 creatures, so maybe Elven Farsight is going to be fine here. Bombadil Song, just to make the Sour on the Ring Bearer. Could be worth it. I have some nice top-end threats to protect. I think I'd rather just have more creatures, though, when I have the Elvish Chorus. Like, I think I just want as many creatures as possible. Chance Met Elves, I don't really have Scry Synergies. Mm, four more cuts. I kind of like Brandywine Farmer because it just gains me a lot of life. And it's a good card to bring back with Sauron because it brings gets me even more life when I do that. I think Revive the Shire can go because I have the two... Sauron's to kind of bring back stuff. Three more cuts. I think with a many partings and a generous end, I could shave on the land and the inherited envelope. And the delighted halfling. I'm just gonna cut a far sight instead. I only have four two drops, so I'm glad I have these two one drops as well. I just want a lot of creatures, so the Andoril and Elven Chorus do a lot of work. Hmm. I don't really have good stuff to sacrifice to it, other than the Brandywine Farmer, so I'm just going to cut Seer Thungle. One, two, three, four, four, five. Creature count is at 16, that's good. My removal spells are one, two, three... Four. So this is 17. Um, I'm going to cut one swap. And just run it like this. I know I need double black. But I have a lot of ways to get it. And I think I have a lot, enough ramp that I'm going to flood it. Maybe. Ooh, I actually have inherited envelope to make the ring bearer. That's kind of nice. I wish I had a creature that made the ring bearer. Like, I would happy, happily play a Hjorn in this deck, I think. <sighs> okay. We'll just see how good this card is. And uh, that will be the build. I will see you folks in... Hmm, I really kind of want to just play 17 lands. Uh, that's tough. Because this card's even fine if I do have a lot of lands. But I have the Many Partings and the Generous Net, which are both kind of lands. 
I want eight so that my many partings is active and the delighted halflings is active. Okay, we're going to try it like this, but we'll be open to making changes as we go. See you folks in the games. If you have been enjoying my videos and would like to support the channel directly, you can do so at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Patreon is a place where viewers can support the creators they enjoy, so if you've been finding my videos helpful or entertaining, or if you've maybe won a couple of extra booster packs because of some of my advice, Patreon is a way for you to chip in and help the channel succeed. You also gain access to some cool rewards as a patron, like my card-by-card -card tier list for Lord of the Rings with my thoughts on every card in the set, and also drafts with me and other cool rewards. I'd like to give a huge shout out to the patrons who support at the credits level, but without further ado, let's get to the games. Welcome to another round, and by another round I mean the first round. We're going to see, I mean this hand is interesting because Halfling is a good one drop, but I don't actually use it that well in this hand. Woes, sure. Hmm. I'm just going to slow them down as much as possible. Because I still have two removal spells in hand. And this just leaves my Elvish Chorus to take over. I'll take the value. And I'm just going to hold a bitter downfall for whatever creature they play this turn. Sure. Ooh, and this will make Sauron on the ring bearer too. And that'll get me back my Vanguard, and they concede. Nice. Easy round one. Just crushing opponent with our rares. See you folks next round. I did have fun in that match. Directly correlated to me winning. <laughs> Welcome to another round. We'll keep this hand on the draw. We've got our Murkwood Spider. Envelope will save us. I really like the Murkwood Spider. I think. Just gives you a way to use your mana efficiently early on. Death Touch is such a good mechanic. Perfect, we drew a land. I'm excited to see how these Bag End Porters do. They seem good with this Ents Fury. So I can't really use the Inherited Envelope yet, and I can use Ents here to kill this, but I think I'm just going to wait, because they can't really use that thing either for a little bit. If they do want to make the trade, I'll make it. Maybe that's incorrect, but I will make it. Sure. It does make my back end porters a little bit worse because I don't have a legendary anymore. If they have a counter spell, they have a counter spell. Voracious Fell Beast is gonna be great if they play a creature here. Oh gosh. Oh gosh, opponent. That's just like game over. And now I have Endurable. Could have gone for the Endurable, but this was just too devastating. Sure.
Oh, that was unfair. And Doodle is not a fair card. Yep. That was nice. We did it! See you folks next round. Welcome to round number three. Keeping this hand easily. Many partings shall find us our forest. I guess we could have found a swamp, but we're going to play the Inherited Envelope on turn three, so... Wizards Rockets. It's okay to waste that part. I'm just going to ramp into Sauron's. Sure. Card that's not as scary in this particular situation, but which will serve me well down the line. Sure. Okay, it will not serve me anymore. Power on down. So they're playing five color, it looks like. They've got white. They have every color but green. So if we draw a land, we can start activating Woes to make Bag End Border a pretty scary threat and Merkwood Spider. Okay, Dawn of a New Age is annoying. Two mana draw three, but it is delayed draw three. So I have some time to find an answer, maybe. Remember, they have a card banked in here. If they have removal spell, they have removal, but this is fine. And if they sacrifice it, I get to hit them for even more damage. And I held back my Death Toucher, and I have Brandywine Farmer to jump if I need to, and I have two foods. Four bag is terrible. This is easy. Okay, two creepers kind of annoying, but not the end of the world either. Play this, and I'm going to make a food to sack a food token. Hope they're gaining some life too. This is what happens when uh, they answer my rares. I mean, my rares weren't actually good in this position, but Siron's actually not as good in my deck as I wish it was.
They have plenty of life, I have plenty of life, but I have some pretty beefy attackers, and Woes is doing major work. Wow, they killed that guy. That's unfortunate. Yeah, this game's over. I drew the be the half of my deck that didn't have my uh, bomb rare uh, sword in it. <laughs> and now they're looting every turn. Still have this thing banked up. I need this to work. Scribe to the top, that's not great. I'm hoping to draw a ball rod or something. That would really push me over the top, because then my bag end porters would hit for extra damage, and all would be peachy. Frodo, okay. Sure. They're just going to loot away all their lands now. I need to draw something good this turn, I think. Ball rock, ball rock, ball rock, ball rock, ball rock. Say it with me. Celeborn is passable. Yep, this is tough. I lose a life too because of the Mirkwood bats. Oh. Are they getting rid of Caliborn? Oh no. They can flip that in instant speed because the wizard's rockets. Oh. Hmm. They can almost just kill me with these two guys. But fortune favors the brave.
So they'll have to block something, which means they'll lose one of their attackers and I'll still have two blockers. I think. They don't necessarily, maybe. I'm hitting for 12. Yep, they're gonna transform Frodo. They don't really have good blocks on these bag end porters. Well, I'm killing Frodo, and I'm going to kill the Cavalier because it has Vigilance. I'll go to damage. What do they have? Oh no. What the? Okay, but they can only. They only have four mana left this turn. If I draw the Balrog. Oh no, I'm gonna regret not killing this stupid Gorbag, aren't I? Oh no, they have that guy anyway. Oh gosh, Shadow of the Enemy. I need to draw something good here. That was not particularly good. I'm gonna keep that on top and pray. Now maybe I can I have three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. So I can actually play Elven Chorus and flip Balrog for the win. Come on, Balrog, you can do it. Be the top card of my library. Dang it. Oh, uh, no. I tried. If I'd drawn the Balrog in this game, I would have won. Or if I'd drawn this card earlier, if I'd drawn Andrew Rill. But nothing I could do at the end of the day. It would have been so cool if Balrog was the top card of my deck. They only have five cards left in their library because they drew so many cards, and I still almost won. That's insane. Oh, they didn't... Oh, gosh. What are they doing? Why didn't they go for the win? They can not They can beat Balrog now, though, which is annoying. The Balrog does seven, and they'll gain one off of the Sea Uncle when they use the food. Oh, man. Never mind. They have given me the out of Balrog. No! I'm so unlucky. Oh, I had two more draws at the win. 
Oh, man. That would have been so cool. They were going to choke that game so hard, and I was going to win. Aw. See you folks next round. Welcome to another round. We will get redemption. We have the Ent. That was just unfortunate. We needed to draw our good spells that game. Two of our bottom 16 cards were Balrog and our, uh, our Flame of the West. And Elven Chorus was pretty deep in the deck, too. The Saurons are our worst rares. <laughs> Still solid, but not our best. So what we want to do with Anduril is set up a situation where we can just play it and equip it in the same turn. So on turn 5, we just play it, equip it to this guy or something. Because if they know it's coming, then it becomes way easier for them to deal with. Sure. They're all tapped out, which gives me a good chance to do this. Now I have a 6-6 six, six and they have an empty board. If I do ever draw a land, I'll get to play this thing. Or this thing. And I have this. If they don't jump block, then uh, Bitter Downfall gets them. I should have attacked with both for that exact... Actually, no, because they have food. Okie doke. This is a very good deck that I have here. It doesn't really use the ring very well, unfortunately, but... I'm not even sure how good Sauron is without the ring stuff going for him. It read very powerfully to me, but it's kind of hard to get stuff in my graveyard. It hits for, like, a lot of damage, though. Yep. Easy peasy. See you folks in the next round. Welcome to another round. This is the perfect hand for being on the draw. We've got many partings into Mushroom Watchdogs. Just have an instant 3-3. Three, three. Gonna get our mountain, because we do have this Balrog to deal with. Sure, we have a double black spell, but we're way more likely to find a swamp than another mountain. I don't think there's really a deal to, so I might as well wait. I guess black or it has one, but it, it's an instant speed effect. The golem thing. Sure. I get to cycle the generous end now, which is also nice. 
and play Galadrim Guide, describe my next land, maybe. Sure. Mordor Muster away. Interesting. I think it's still better to just play the guide. Keep affecting the board. Maybe I'll scry a swamp to the top. Well, neither of those are helpful. And if I can't play Sauron, I can't play Sauron. It's not the end of the world. I only have one big thing in the graveyard anyway. Maybe I shouldn't even play Sauron. That's how kind of mediocre it is, I think, in my deck. Oh, that was good. Can't hobbits sting it? I kind of want to save this thing, so if I do draw an elven chorus, I can like shuffle my deck to reset the top. Uh, okay, they're gonna regret doing that. If I attack with both, they're gonna triple block. Because I have my next play lined up and it's pretty good in this spot, I'm just going to do this. Because the lower they are, the better the Balrog will be. If they play the card that lets them take a card from my hand and amass two, I'm going to be toast. Sure. Oh no. They have four mana. Okay, I need to start playing Torment of Gollum. That card always feels like it's going to wreck me. Oh. oh, that's so funny. I can't believe they just did that to me. My gosh. Oh my gosh, Torment of Gollum is just hosing me. Every time it gets played, it takes my best card the turn before I can play it. Okay, well, that's not good for me. Using my removal spell on a 1-3 is feeling short-sighted now. Oh, they have Frodo, sure. Still gonna keep the Shire Terrace around. Okay, oh, that at least unlocks an attack. Oh, man. The Balrog never gets to hit the battlefield. The times I do draw it, they are playing a black deck with Torment of Gollum, the turn before I can play it. Which they probably drew, in all honesty, off of their Mortar Muster, because that's the way the world works sometimes. Gosh, that, that's frustrating. Balrog would have been an easy win, obviously, because they can't block it. Or they can now, but they couldn't at the time. Uh... This card's looking way better than I thought it was. Double Strike and the Ring Tempts. This game is so over, I'm toast.
I wish I could attack with the Galadrium Guide. But alas, just my 4 4 coming in hot. This is just one of those losses that feels inevitable. But I do think I need to play this card a little bit more. Because I've gotten wrecked by it enough that it's probably just actually good. Oh my gosh. I just want to concede. So this thing's going to hit me for... No, because I can jump block it. Gosh, Torment of Gollum was even close to missing. I only had one spell in my hand. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, that's devastating. Oh, that's definitely lethal. I can scoop them up. Oh my gosh. Torment of Gollum is so brutal. Welcome to another round. This is an easy keep. We have Watchdogs and Andoodle. Ah, oh, that can kill the Andoodle. We're going to play the Halfling this turn, actually. Because then we can slam Bag End Porter next turn, which is way better. Because then we can do this, equip and attack. Oh, they're stuck on lands. That's good. This can only activate as a sorcery, yeah. I really want them to double block. And they probably know that. So what I can do next turn is I can sacrifice this food to the watchdogs to make this guy cost one less. And then I'll have the mana to cast him for six. File, that's a good card. But will it save them? Definitely not. Remember this taps for any color to ca cast legendaries. That's pretty much game over. That was a pretty devastating turn. Oh, also they're losing their Westfold Rider. I mean, they have to. They go to four. That was pretty good as a curve out. As far as curve outs go, Delighted Halfling was incredible, so I definitely am glad I have that card. Well, then I can block this guy. Okay. Oh, they have something? I don't think there was a two-mana spell that could have gotten them out of that, but... Wow. That was pretty good. I, I kind of want to make some changes to the deck. I know we just devastated them, but I think I want to put in the Elven Farset, because scrying three to find my good cards is so good. It just takes 10% of the way through my deck. I can just get rid of all the junk. I think that's actually really, really good in this home. Because I win the games where I draw my good cards, and I lose the games where I don't. Okay, sure, whatever that is. Okay, I'm going to put an Elven Farsight. And honestly, I want to kind of want to put in... And I think I'm going to take out a Sauron. Or a Galadrim Guide. But I honestly think, think Sauron might be my worst card. Because it never seems to do anything. Every time I've played it, it is just... I mean, it eats removal, which is nice. But I just want to have a cheaper card. Like, I almost want to put in the Lothlorien Lookout over the other Sauron. 
And then with like all my scrying, I can like put in the, this thing. I think that's the only change I'll make though. I kind of want to put in Seerth Ungle Patrol, but I think this is going to be good. I'll see you folks next round. Welcome. This is a great hand. Woe's Pathfinder lets us play this on turn three. We get to get our mountain. I hope we draw the Elven Farsight so we can see if it would perform the way we want it to. So we have a lot of lands here, but we do have the Galadrian Guide to scry away any other lands. That was a good draw. I really like Woes. Woes does a lot of work. Play the 4-4 four, four or the Scryer? Am I going to trade with the Mirror Mirror Guardian is the question. I don't think so. So I'd rather have the bigger guy that attacks back for more. Because next turn I don't really care what I draw. I can still use my 6th land. But because it'll let me use this guy or 7th land. But I think... Setting up my draw for the future is better. Maybe I should... I just think I want to get the bigger guy out first. Here and me are so annoying, because you don't want to trade with it, but it's like sizing makes it so it's like the easiest to trade with. Okay, that's why you do it that way I, I, that I did it. I'll just play the guide because it can block the Westfold Rider. Well, and Doodle is amazing. We don't really want the envelope, though. We can block there. We could even just trade at this point because that'll make Fell Beast better. I just need to make sure I have two creatures in place so they can't just, like, kill both. Oh. This feels the hardest for them to interact with. I think if they have, like, Stew the Conies, this could go badly. Where I play this, they try to equip, they kill my guy with Stew the Conies. This way, they'll sack a guy, they'll trade with the other guy, and then I'll just have a bunch of creatures against their empty board, and I'll have good removal spells and stuff. Also, I want to get rid of Westfold Rider, obviously. Okay, I don't know why they did it like that. Yeah. We got the win. See you folks next round. Welcome to another great hand. We'll keep this. Elven Chorus is great. Anduido is great. Spider is going to tie this whole hand together. Make sure I don't get owned in the early turns. Hopefully I draw something cheap to play. Obviously we all know what the best draw would be. Whoa's Pathfinder. They mold the five. That's a great draw too. If you can curve into uh, honestly either one of these two things, you're in good shape. I'm having a newfound respect for Westfold Rider. It seems like it might do some work. I'm just going to try to find a creature and a land. Okay, so I missed on both counts.
Just doing that because my mana is going to be tied up the next couple turns. I want to keep all my creatures in play now for obvious reasons. Give me a lot of mana. Sure. This is a pretty good combo. Maybe I should have held back a one toughness guy to block Gollum. I don't know what color is it. Okay, blue. Sure. And they scoop it up. I think we're heading into the final round because we're 6-2. and two. So if I win this, I get the trophy. And if I lose, uh, it's still a great run. See you folks in the finals. Welcome to the final round. We got a keeper on our hands. It only has swamps. But Brandywine Farmer into Balrog is pretty reasonable to do. And we also have... Oh, there's a, another land. Uh, we also have this on turn 3. Caliborn can scry us into what we need. And this will work out. That's just about the worst thing we could have possibly seen. My gosh, we are so bad against flyers. We don't have any reach. Those guys are going to hit us for 10 times and we're going to lose. Dang it. Maybe this hand was too sketchy. Felt okay. I'm one kill spell away from just complete death. Gosh darn it. Yep. And it's a swamp. Of course it is. I think I have to kill a flyer. not feel good. Oh! I am so sad. Just getting completely obliterated by my mana in the last round. I could have mulliganed. There's the land. By the time it doesn't matter at all. Gosh darn it. I should have killed this this guy, and then just traded with the East Smart Cavalier. That was another misplay. But I was counting on my guide living, because... Oh, man. But I would be at an extra 2 life. I'd be at 10. They'd still have a flyer, but I would have way better chances of beating the flyers. Oh, yeah. There's no chance. Of that. No chance I ever win this. Gosh darn it.
Well, feels bad to fall just short, but... I mean, I could have mulligan, but it felt like a reasonable hand on the, on the play. That could just be good enough, honestly. That's crazy. Gosh, they have one card in hand, two cards in hand, I guess. So the Cavalier gets to hit me now. Forgot I had this guy in my deck. Okay, they're out of cards. And I can't draw anything but swamps! This is so tilting. I'm just gonna lose to an E Smart Cavalier now. Because they had a way to kill my woes. They just get rid of Haunt as the Dead Marshes. I am stabilizing though, slowly but surely. One copy of this card could be good. Oh my gosh, generous end. It's so clutch. I need to draw one of my good cards, like Enduadil or something. Honestly, Enduadil is not what I want. I want Elven Chorus. Jeez. Well, it is a rare, but it's not the one I wanted. Honestly, Sauron would actually be really good in this board state. Giving all their tokens death, that's just not good for me. Really bad, in fact. Gosh. Am I dead on board? I think so. Gosh. Oh, I was so close to stabilizing. Oh, man. I choked this game. If I had killed their um, army when I had the chance. Though, honestly, the army would have just started to grow again with the goth mog. So it would have still been a problem. Oh, man. So sad. I really wanted to get a max win run there. What did I even lose to? I think I lost really early rounds. Like, one to, like, missing land drops or something. I mean, I lost to mana issues a couple times, I think. That one, I didn't, didn't hit my good cards. When you have uh, some really strong cards in your deck, you really just want to draw those. That last game was just a really annoying one. I got mana screwed and didn't draw my good cards. Not a good combo. Still almost got there, though. Gosh, using Lash on their one, one flyer did not pay off the way I was hoping. I just needed to deploy my cards. Oh, well. Well, 6 and 3 is not terrible. Pretty good, actually. So if you did make it all the way to the end of the video... In the comment section down below, leave hashtag raining bombs because we had a lot of bomb errors in this deck. We had Balrog, we had Andudil, and we had a Elven Core. So lots of bombs, and this card's even pretty good. But yeah, hashtag raining bombs to let me know you made it all the way till the end of the video. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe for more, comment with your questions, thoughts, and feedback, and I'll talk to you next time.